In this video, I'm going to show you how applying a one-size-fits-all policy to driving situations is not always the best idea. In fact, it could cause you to fail your driving test. But first of all, very quickly, if you would like to support me on my mission here to make more and better driving lesson videos freely available to you and the people following you, then consider making a donation by PayPal. I will leave links in the description and in the first pinned comment and any support is greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance. When doing your driving test, it's important that you don't apply a strict interpretation of the rules of the road to every single driving situation because sometimes a bit of flexibility and common sense are going to be needed. For example, um, a few days ago, a lad sent me an email and he had failed his driving test. And this is his report sheet. One of the things he said to me was that the tester said he was driving too slow. And the person that emailed me said, the reason he was driving so slow was because it was um, raining heavily um, all day. And the learner driver assumed that because it was raining heavily, that he had to go extra slow to show that he was taking into account the conditions. So he said to me in the email he was going 40 in a 50 zone and he was going 50 in a 60 zone. Now, if he said 40, maybe he's being kind there and maybe he was really doing 30 or 35. I don't really know, um, but that's what he said to me anyway. And some people make a special effort to go very slow in the rain. But the truth is that might not always be needed. And I'll explain why in a second. But when you're driving in the rain, you also need to be very aware of your clearance. In some ways, that's more important than making an effort to drive slow. So apply the four second rule. That means drive four seconds at least behind the person in front of you. And that way you're showing good clearance and you're giving yourself some extra time to stop and break. Also be aware of your wipers, um, use your dipped headlights, and make sure you know how your demisters work because it's important to keep your windows clear so you have a good view out the windows when you're driving. But not all rain is the same. We do live in Ireland after all. You may get some light rain, you might get some heavy rain. So if it's just a little bit of light rain, you don't really need to drive all that differently then um, compared to the way you will be driving in the dry weather. Now, if it's heavy rain, for example, and you're on a bad road, like with lots of potholes and lots of puddles, well then, in that case, you will need to be extra careful and you certainly will need to reduce your speed by at least 10, maybe 15 kilometers because it all depends on the situation. But my message to you as a learner driver, if you're doing your driving test in the rain is, think of the two extremes I just mentioned there, torrential rain on bad roads and a little bit of mist, but not much more than that. They are two very different scenarios and your driving needs to be dependent on that. If you take it upon yourself to drive 10 or 15 kilometers below the speed limit in the rain, then you are at risk of losing marks on progress. I will stress it does depend on the situation. The tester will use his or her discretion as well. But just because there's a bit of rain out there, it does not mean you reduce your speed significantly. Remember, you have to show good progress in the rain as well as in the dry weather. So bear in mind, is the rain heavy or is it light? Is the road surface good or is it bad? Can you see a lot ahead of you or do you have limited vision ahead of you? And the answers to these questions should then be reflected in your driving. For example, if I was a tester and I was testing somebody in the rain and the learner driver doing the driving test suddenly decided to drive 15 or 10 kilometers below the speed limit on what is a good and reasonable road with a good surface and you know a reasonably good view ahead of you. If a learner driver started driving like that, I'd probably be thinking, well, why is this person driving so slow? And do they not have confidence in their ability to drive in inclement weather? But also on this report sheet, as you'll see, the candidate lost marks on position as well. So he said to me that the tester said to him that he was driving too close to the left all the time. And in the email, the learner driver said to me, but Dane, I thought you were always meant to drive close to the left-hand side. I was just applying what I thought was in the rules of the road book. Well, 
in general, you do keep left of center, but you must not think that you have to keep left on every single kind of road because this rigid interpretation is going to cost you dearly. So if it's a good straight road and a reasonably wide lane, then certainly keep left of center, especially if it's a straight road or if it's a right-hand bend. However, if it's um, a narrow country road and it's a left bend, let's say, then the best thing to do is to drive a little bit more central and that'll give you a better view of the road ahead and the other traffic, the other oncoming traffic, I mean, will have a better view of you. Similarly, if it's um, in a dual carriageway situation, you need to be driving in the center of your lane then and not straddling the left or not straddling the center white line. As I said, it all depends on the situation. You need to be flexible, you need to read the situation ahead and then use your um, common sense and good judgment to apply a good driving position. In a separate email over the weekend, um, a person asked me about revs, using the revs on the car. He was saying that he has a kind of a larger vehicle and it needs some acceleration in order to move off properly. But apparently um, a driving instructor, I think, told him that you can't give it that much revs because it'll cost you marks. Now, again, I'm going to paint you two um, extreme situations here, okay? Let's say in that vehicle you move off and you give it way too much revs. You give it 3,000 or 4,000 uh, revs just on what is a normal flat surface or a slight hill. That's way too much, okay? Far too high and you will lose marks there. But if you move off and then you don't give it any revs and as a result of that, the car starts to struggle or chug a little bit or could be even at risk of conking out, or at the very least it's gonna be kind of slow and cumbersome moving off. Well then in that situation, it's going to cost you as well. So very often the answer is somewhere in between. Don't rev it really, really high, but don't give it no revs. Try and practice giving it gentle revs. So you have like one and a half or, or um, 1500 revs on your, on, your, um, on your clock. And if you can practice this by keeping your heel on the ground, and just gradually practice building up the revs and that should be fine then. And in another email then, someone asked me about crossing the continuous white line in the middle of the road. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, if the white line in the middle of the road is a solid line, that's unbroken solid, that means you're not allowed to cross that then apart from in certain situations like for an emergency or maybe for access, things like that. But the question arises then, well, what if there's a slow vehicle in front of you? For example, a cyclist or a county council cleaning truck or something like that. Are you allowed to cross the continuous white line then to overtake that hazard? And the answer is yes, you are, if it's safe. Because remember, what's practical will always win out over a rigid and strict interpretation of the rules of the road. Overtaking a hazard on a continuous white line at 50 or 60 kilometers is much more dangerous than doing it at 10 or 15 or 20 kilometers. So the two situations are very different. If you're overtaking a slower vehicle, you are spending less time on the wrong side of the road. So it should theoretically be safer to do it. Now, of course, it's not ideal and it should only be done in certain situations if you want to maintain a practical sense of driving and in order to show good progress. For example, let's say you have a really slow vehicle in front of you, like a council cleaning truck of some type, and it's driving very, very slow and you're considering overtaking it. So my advice to you is to judge the situation um, as a whole. Do not stare at the truck. Do not put all your focus on the object that you're overtaking. Look beyond the truck a little bit. So what I mean by that is look out for other junctions that might be ahead because maybe that truck might take a left turn or a right turn further up at those junctions and therefore you don't have to carry out an overtaking maneuver then. Look ahead and see is the road widening a little bit. Maybe there's a, a hard shoulder of some type or a lay-by or um, a kind of a parking area that the hazard, whether it's a truck or whether it's a cyclist, can kind of go into. And therefore, that means you don't have to overtake him then, you can just continue on as he moves into the left. So you'll see here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to encourage you to read the road ahead in its entirety. Don't focus on the hazard. And sometimes you may not need then to actually overtake the hazard.
As a driver, you're going to have to make on-the-spot decisions in your lessons and in the test. My advice to you is judge every situation in its entirety and always remember that no two situations are the same. Sometimes you will have to use a bit of flexibility and use your common sense. As always, it depends on the situation. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll be back very soon with another driving lesson video. I'll be doing some live streams again um, from the month of June, so I hope to see you there as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.